I feel like women are gonna end up ruling the world eventually. And I am pro that. Because living in a man's world is boring. Men don't have nowadays nothing to offer besides money and because they don't come with real values. Men values have decreased immensely. Oh, talk about it, sis. Men value have decreased immensely throughout decades. And I don't know if it has to do with society bringing you down, but literally you guys do not believe in honor and street code and no type of code. Your guys are just following whatever it is that gets you the next bitch. And if you're that type of the weakest man I have ever met in my oh. life. But if you're a man that follows no man codes and you do not live with honor, then unfortunately your manhood is stripped away from you. And if you do not realize that now, you will realize that late. Very late. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Holiday the Golden Child. You already know your official. I'm a bad bitch. I'm back in the building. I heard y'all been missing me. I heard y'all been looking for me, you know? But today, I can't want to guess my homegirl, my good, good, good sis. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My favorite nail tech. Hey, now. Shanti in the building. You already know. Shanti. Thank you. We came to give the ladies some game because you right. See, we love the nail salon because we I go to the nail salon and that's our safe haven where we mm -hmm. sit and we talk our sh you know what I'm saying? And we and we we give the juice and the tea. And one of the topics that we came up with and was talking about was um game changers versus life changers. You know, um my good sis, she was just telling me about some shit she had went through in her life. I'm telling her about some shit I'm going through in my life. We like, we gotta tell the ladies because I know y'all. Are going through the same thing. What's the difference between a life changer and a game changer? I think the difference is, for example, if you do have a relationship with a guy, if he's invest, let's say if he has money, um, a nigga just spends money on you is a game changer. But a guy who's really invested and wants to teach you things and put you onto game, that would be a life changer. So one of the many things that I see is like a lot of girls would say. You know, as long as a man give me money, I don't care what he does, I'm, I'll am i I'll stick through whatever. And I think that kind of gets old because... Are you saying with your man if he cheats on you? Yes, I... Nah, I, keep it a buck, keep it a buck, because I know you're a little crazy. I think I have stayed, but I don't. I wouldn't stay if it becomes something that is... What if he's paying your bills? Like, what if he's paying the bills, he's taking care of everything, you're not Eventually, staying? that's not a life changer, that's a game changer with, with that being said. So eventually you will get tired of that and you will leave but i want to know like what is ashanti doing in the moment let's say you dating a guy he's spending the bag he's giving you everything you need and you find out he's cheating the rent is due sis you heard mary i ain't got nothing rent money but rent money do i don't think i'll leave right away no you staying yes what's some reasons you staying um if i'm dealing with any man that i'm with it's because i love him that's number one. And number two, I feel like if if he is paying my bills, it's because we have already established a foundation where I have depended on him in that particular area. And for me to just... Um, it's because the D is good. Keep it real. You staying because the D is good. No, I just feel like if I'm in a position where I'm depending on a man, I cannot just break what we have going on because... Not like I'm the one who's going. So is this the difference between uh, emotional decisions? Like game change, life changes and game changes also are affected by emotional decisions. So I, like, for example, like if I'm with a guy and he cheats on me and he's paying, he's paying the bills, he done leveled me up and we doing that. I'm staying. You know why I'm staying? Because that rent is due. That money is due. The bills are due. Right. And. You know, as a woman who is financially uh, independent, I'm still staying <laughs> because men don't leave without a plan. You know that, right? Like they don't just get up and go. Yeah, like, that's they don't true. just they don't just be like, that's true. F this chick like she cheated on me. Like they might cut you off a little bit. But once they realize how much that they have invested and they're built with you, they're staying. And as women, sometimes we make these emotional decisions that could be life changing. As a life changing to you ladies, if the man cheats, I suggest you leave him. Um, the only reason why you're staying is probably to get ahead if you are using him What's for money. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that, but just know that it wouldn't change for what you want. I think ladies should leave. I, one time, I guess, a mistake is a mistake, but if it becomes a pattern, I suggest... Have you ever been in this position? 
Tell me when you have been in a position. Have you ever caught him? I've been in a position where I have been cheated on and I stayed. You caught him cheating. And because of that, I feel what like... What kind of cheating? Was it like you caught like nasty pictures and DMs? No, no. Like, it was like, it was very mild. <laughs> it was a mild situation. Um, but I have stayed. And, you know, it's not a good feeling if the person continues. You know, so... If it happens more than once, I think you should leave. Well, you're a woman who has your own money, ladies. Like, we got a lot more options, right? So, I personally am, a, a, from a woman's standpoint that is independent financially, I think that you should stay. A man cheating, to me, is not a life-changing moment for me. Like... That doesn't mean that he's going to be a forever cheater. That doesn't mean... Sometimes men cheat and they they understand bad boy. Don't do it again. You might lose me. You know, I'm not talking about the men that, that keep our... What do you call them? Habitual cheaters. A lot of times, yes, you can buy your ways to prove you're sorry. But even when you buy your way, you could tell when a man genuinely does something because that's how he feels about you. And you can tell when a man is just buying you things because he just wants to get, make you get over it. Give me an example. There's no example. You just, when you know your man, you know his ways and you know when it's genuine or not. You would know. You I would need know. some examples because to me, after you start cheating on me and I stay, I'm just, just going to use you now. Now I'm just going to use you. And it might I might use you for a month. I might use you for two months and then fall back in love with you again. I'm just keeping it in the bug. I just got to keep it real with you. My ladies, that's what I'm here for. Hold on for a second. Make sure you guys subscribe. Click that button. Make sure you share, comment, and do all of that before I get into this juicy, juicy, sh I can't even curse, but get into this juicy stuff right here. But my point is, is that what you doing? Like, no girls leaving their man right away. Nah, you not leaving. But you know, I'm a crazy girl. Like honestly, I'm using him. That's my point. I'm a crazy I'm girl. Him. Like I feel like once I had enough, I don't give a fuck how much bills. If it's due tomorrow, I'll figure it out. I'm out. See you later because I can't take so it. So that goes into what I was talking about earlier with Alan. I said, you know, there's some women, right? That would that after fi fi finding out that they got cheated on, they're gonna stay with the man because they got bills due, they got kids with him, they they, they don't work, they're not making any income and all these things, right? But then there's the woman who says he's the life changer. If I stay a moment longer, my mental health is gonna is gonna decrease, my health is gonna decrease, um, and 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 my bitterness is gonna is gonna increase. You understand what I'm saying? So this is the this is the difference between a game changer and a life changer. A game changer is, you know, hoping that he he's staying and hoping that he does better. Life changer is saying, I gotta put me put me first. Exactly. I gotta put me first. Cause if I don't leave, thank you. I'm gonna look back five years from now, regretting that I didn't walk out the door when I first found out this bullshit. And you like explain it perfectly like that's exactly what i meant a game changer is staying with a man and trying to level up but a life changer is when you finally decide to leave him because you have to put yourself first and us as women we're so nurturing that we would stop a lot of that we got going on for ourselves to comply to comply in what the type of relationship that we have men i want y'all i just want to take a second real quick and just let y'all know what y'all put us through I know we crazy. I know we bug out. I know we go through these bipolar moments. But these are, this is the crazy thing about it. You knew that. You're prepared for that. You got a whole mother effing handbook that teaches you to prepare you for our outburst. But there is no rule book that has been made, not yet, for the man to show us and tell us how to prepare for the nonsense y'all put us through. And that's why women are now getting in a space where we are deciding, is this a game changer or a life changer, homie? Right. You know, you bought me a car, that's a game changer. You know what I'm saying? But when I met you, you had some bad skin. That is life changing. <laughs> you teaching me how to cook is life changing. Life changing, changing yes. Right? Definitely. You said you didn't know how to cook until no, you... No, until I got into you, a you relationship. Dated, you dated, she's, she dated somebody and she didn't know how to cook. And what happened? And so I 
I used to, I grew up like with a. God, tell them, don't be shy. I grew up with, <laughs> like, you know, a cleaning lady in my house. So I left my house to be with the person I'm dating. And um, I had to learn how to cook and clean. And I did that, you know, for the relationship. And that was a life changing because now I feel like I could defend myself in any kitchen, you know? Oh, sort of. <laughs> not a chef's kitchen. <laughs> I could defend myself in any kitchen. But these are life changing moments. And sometimes men, like, yeah, you could spend money on me, but teaching me something. Like, I think eventually a man has to teach mm -hmm. you something. <laughs> y'all know I'm infamous for giving y'all the rundown. My top three, my top five, my top ten. But, Shanti, I got to know, like, because cause the ladies, they depend on me to give them this game, right? right. So I don't want to fall them short. I want to know, like, what's your top five of spotting and knowing, like, he's a good dude? And then I'm going to tell you why he's not and what to look for to know that he's not. All right, so my number one... Let um, me take a shot, because... <laughs> <laughs> Before I... When, when you first meet a dude, the first things I try to notice is, um, number, number one. one, is he a good tipper? Now, when a man is a good tipper... Wait. So you assuming that you met him at the bar or no? You like when we at first, I got, when we you first, work at Applebee's no, like when I first go on a date when a guy, with the guy. Okay. Oh. You okay. know what I'm trying. Okay. To, when I start meeting a guy and we go on a date, okay. like I try to notice things that give me either red flags or green ones. Mm. And the number one is a good tipper. Now, when you are a good tipper, that comes with um, you have social etiquette. So that that kind of sh that kind of teaches oh, me. Use the big words. Go ahead. That kind of teaches me that you know you 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 know how to move, you know, and also teaches me that you are um uh what's the word for it a giver, or es que en español no <laughs> um detallista. I don't know how to say it in English, but um mm, gracious. Un poquito español. Um. Anyways. So, generous. Generous. There you go. Okay. A generous man. Another one would be if I used to date a Puerto Rican back in the day. <laughs> you know, another one would be is um is is he family orientated? Now that is important for me because I am family orientated and I like to do things as a group all the time. Like I always like to bring my peoples with me. It don't matter if it's friends, whatever. I always like to have, you know, an ambiance. And when you're not a family person, you kind of um don't have a lot of values, you know. So that's one thing. Number three. Um, what's up there? If he knows how to dress, you know, I have a preference and I like guys that, you know, dresses according to my liking. What um, is a keeper that you know he's a good guy in the bedroom? Two. The last two, four and five. Fuck. Um <laughs> I feel like uh what, is, fucking, what does he do on the on the date in the bedroom? I haven't I don't even know what to say for this. Like it's been so long. Um, it's been so long for what? To even know what the fuck a new dude does. Um, yeah, dude, what 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 did he do? And 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 on what did he do? That made you be like, yo, I'ma keep him. What's that little thing he did with his talk? Playing with me right now, for real. Okay, I think size has a lot to do with it. You know, for me. But um, cut, 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 cut that, do, 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 do. I don't fucking know. What the know. fuck is that? You were just on my lawn talking about sixteen ways to suck dick. No, bitch. I said, what if they ask me what type of dick I like? Bitch? Yeah, then tell them <laughs> what type of dick you like. What, what the fuck? She said, I'm already ready. I'm already ready. I don't, you I don't said, seem ready. I, I, I'm spazzing. Ah. <laughs> uh, Number four, I don't like guys that rush to the pussy. I like when you take your time. Like, there we go. Like, I like there when a go. guy kisses up on you and, you know, talks to you and, like, ease his way into it. I don't like guys that just want to get straight. Do you talk Spanish to you guys? Yes, all the time. What do you say? Tell me something, because I want to take that back mm. home. Tell me. Something to say. If you want to tell our ladies that don't speak Spanish right now, something sexy to say in the bedroom. No, no, no. I'm not I'm not even going to go into No, that. give me, give me. I need, I don't I need. have sexy. Okay, I mean, I'm not going to sound sexy right now. Okay, well, give me something in Spanish to say. Uh, wow, well, I call him papi. <laughs> like, I don't fucking know, bitch. It's a moment thing. Like, this is not something I rehearse. Like, how do you say digging me deeper in Spanish? Like, But I'm not talking to him in Spanish, so it's like, I will say little words. Jamaican. Yeah, yeah. He don't want to hear that shit. Right, like, <laughs> what the fuck am I going to tell him? He's not going to understand. Okay, what's number five? <sighs> number five, give me money. 
If you don't give me money, I think that's a red flag. That's it. Yeah, I like when a guy spends money on me. It makes me feel good. Why are you looking at me like that? So your first one, <laughs> I just need everyone to take Oh, okay, okay, so okay. So what was number one? A generous tipper. A generous tipper. I'm going to tell you why that's a red flag. He can tip nice in the club, so what? He can tip nice in a, in a restaurant. He can leave the, the bartender. So what? What does that mean? He is trying to impress me. Yo, the first week, a man is doing everything he's supposed to do, right? The first two weeks, maybe. If he if he really is trying to get in them drawers, he's going to do everything right. What was number two? Family oriented. Family oriented. He can fake it till you, you ever have to fake it until you make it? <laughs> When he come around, cause cause I know. Let me hold on. Let me just talk about my mama. My mother gonna fake it till she make it. She's gonna call everybody son. She's gonna cook that good cornbread. She's gonna make that amazing Sunday dinner, and she's gonna also check up on you and make sure you got home safe. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I can have another over. I don't the next think day. you could you could fake a family oriented person. Yeah, you can. I'm telling you, you can. Like. At the end of the day, like I'm the person, I'm the, I'm the, I'm not saying I, I fake it, <laughs> but I have. I know what you mean. You, you know, like, like I, with my own family, I come to the barbecue, any family function, I might stay for an, a few minutes, a couple minutes, an hour, maybe eat some good food, chop it up, and see my cousins I ain't seen in a while, and I'm, and I'm out of there. You understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Now, I bring a boyfriend through, I be like, we got to go see my family because I just want to show him off. So that's what I mean by fake it till you make it. I'm just bringing him to show him off. I'm not really bringing him to get him acquainted with my aunt and my cousin. Like, like I love the guy who acts. This is what I'm talking about. This is my point. Let me get to my point. He's going to he's gonna move off of my energy. When we get in the car, you know, the first thing he's going to say, your mom was great. Your aunt was great. And, I, and he's waiting for me to be like, fuck them bitches. Mm hmm Excuse my French. My aunt, she gossiped too much. My mama, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She was doing too much. And now he can let his guard down and be like, I was ready to get out of there too. I was just waiting for you to say, let's go. Mm -hmm. Men fake it till they make it all the time. So him coming in and being around your family and smiling and bringing the cake and, oh, yeah, oh we're having a barbecue at uh, Abu, Abu, how you say, Abuelita? Ab Abuelita. Abuelita. We're having a, a, a picnic at grandma's house and pick up some ice. No problem, babe. Anything else you need me to pick up? He does, he, the whole ride and while he's picking up the ice, he's on the phone with his man. like, yo, she got me running errands for my family and did, I don't even do this for my moms. Like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, Faking it until you make it. What's number three? Because <laughs> number three was dress. Dress well. I know this is New York. What's up, New York? Click, like, subscribe, New York. I love y'all. This is my city. And we can dress. And we can get fly on $40. You can go to Jamaica Avenue. You can go to Fordham Road. Right. You can go, I don't, I don't know the other spots. <laughs> Yonkers, what's this Yeti Square? You could go get fly for a budget. Or come get your nails done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, him getting fly doesn't determine that, like, yo. No, that's just a preference. He's a winner. Me. He's a winner. What was number four? Oh, number four was like, I like a guy who eases his way into it. Like, he just does not go straight, you know, to the sex. Like, um,. But yeah, but then there's... Like, like kisses you and stuff like that. Like, gets you ready. Like, you know? That's not a fucking red flag. The, I, don't, I don't hate that. Let me tell you something. The guy who takes his time, he is pre-calculated. Don't be the serial killers. <laughs> I'm dead serious. They be the serial killers. They be pre-calculated. They be thinking about, okay, I'm going to walk in the door. She's going to sit down. I'm going to take off my jacket. I'm going to ask to go to the bathroom so I can check myself real quick. Give her a moment. To decide if she really is excited about me. Like, I'm telling you. Like, I got homeboys. All right, what was number this five? Give me Hold money. On, wait, I'm not done with number four. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, just being that. Just, just. The guy who walks in the door. And, and I like the guy. I'm going to just tell you why he's not the one. The guy who takes his time. Because he's not sure what he wants. He's not sure of himself. So who is the one? The, the guy who. 
I told you my well, top five. I'm going to tell you why number four that doesn't make him the right the right one. I hope number five I'm does. I'm telling you why it's a red flag because I hope number five he works could just out for be me. playing the games. I want the guy straight out the door who's making it clear. Listen, baby girl, I don't want to do all this Ben shit. Well, th that's different. No, but I'd rather him be up front. The, uh, me too. So, so that's a so, red, okay. So, so, so let me so, change so, my so, number. So wait, wait, wait. No, because him. Acting and taking Change his five, time, then. taking his time to get in your drawers. He's a scam artist. What you said? What I like in he's the a bedroom. Scammer. I That's thought... it. That's what I'm getting from that. that so scam me on my panties, cause I might like it better then. Cause <laughs> if I if you're just doing a shit like that, I probably won't even enjoy it. Okay, what was your number five? Money. Give me money. She got number five. I'm gonna let her ride on that one. <laughs> I'm gonna let you ride on it, cause I tell her. If he really like you, he gonna do what? Spend the bag. <laughs> okay. Like, share, subscribe. That bad bitches. Okay. We don't play about the bag, and we don't play. Listen, what what a man is in his feelings about you. Make sure you know. I know. You know. He gonna cut that check. He do. He gonna cut that check. Zoom in. He gonna cut that check. <laughs> Check me. Let's talk about friends. You know what I mean? A space, a space that you feel like is top five line for friends not to cross. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna talk about top five lines that friends should be invited into that space. And it's okay for them to comment. And have an opinion and and say whatever they're gonna say, but I wanted to know like through your experience in life, if you've ever experienced, you know what I mean, having a friend that overstepped their boundaries. I have um, been in situations where, of course, my friends overstep overstep their boundaries. A lot of it comes fr from passion, but um, one of one of the reasons is um, me and my homegirl we used to be up and down all the time, and um, you know then I got into a relationship, and that kind of caused problem. But it was mostly because um, you know she had my back, and as a friend that had my back, she overstepped her boundaries a lot of times because she felt like you know I'm too nice or I wouldn't be able to face whatever she feels like she could face better so she would try to be me in the moment and try to um do things that i wouldn't do just uh, to defend me and a lot of times i feel like she would overstep my boundary because i feel like i could defend myself pretty well probably not exactly like her you know but it takes me more time how did you how did the man you were dating at the time take that he's very much understanding because um The boundaries weren't overstepped that there's no coming back from it. You understand what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say? Um, so what were some ways you felt like at the time in that particular the moment? The way I dealt, dealt like, with what it? what did she do in that particular moment, the person, whoever we're talking about, um, overstepped her boundaries? Give me some examples. Nothing, just by defending me and, you know, putting me on, you know, just defending me in ways. She's just a little bit aggressive, but there's no way to, to, to tell you. She just would speak up for me when I wouldn't speak up for myself. Was your man cool with that? I didn't give him an option to be. I didn't care whether he was cool with that or not because at the end of the day, I see who has the best interest in me in the moment of when everything was happening. So that was out the question, you know? Say I'm oh. saying I have experienced it, but it's not something that I look forward to. Did you fuck me? Huh? All right, so, yeah, wow, over boundaries that being stepped, exhibit okay. A, and then let's go. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to exhibit B, like I was talking, you know? Back to exhibit B. Shout out to my homegirl. You have my fucking back, bitch. I'm just bringing you up because you are. Nobody, that. nobody, we're not even gonna use that. It don't matter, yeah, but just like, in case you do. Nobody I love you, ho. No, I ain't no fucking fucked up, bitch. I swear to God, girl, I knew you was defending me. <laughs> ah! Ah! Roger that. Now, overstepping boundaries. Have you ever overstepped anybody's boundaries? Always. Damn. Always. My friends, don't tell me none of your business if you don't want me to overstep my boundaries. 
Right. Like, don't tell me shit. Don't tell me shit about that 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 boy, that man that did you wrong or he played himself because I'm going to tell you how stupid you are. I'm going to tell you how stupid you are for staying. I'm going to tell you that you're stupid for allowing it. And I'm going to tell you it's all your fault because men only do what you allow them to do. I'm going to tell you those things. So, yeah, I'm that friend. And the only part that I don't overstep my boundaries and I tell women, this is advice to my ladies right now, is your personal opinion towards her man, it doesn't matter. So if I tell you something about my man that he, that he messed up or he did something stupid and it offends you, when you see my man, don't act like you know nothing. Like that's the mistake that women make. That's overstepping your boundaries. When you act like you know something, because now I gotta have a conversation with this guy about why my friend is handling him wild crazy. All right, can I ask a question? When you ask him about friends overstepping boundaries, can you ask me that again? Oh, now you want to give some answers. I'm not, I, nobody cares about your personal life. It's not my personal. When you give an opinion. It's not just, my personal. Just, just, I'm giving my opinion. Like, that's it. Like, I don't care how nobody feels. I don't, none of my friends think I'm talking about them because I wouldn't talk to them on the phone if I felt this way about them. And if they did play themselves, then it is about them. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> um... No, I was just gonna say in the scenario. So what question you want me to ask again? No, no, no. Just right next now. question then. Next question. Oh, it's no next question. What I'm saying is, is that at the end of the day, overstepping your boundaries when it comes to having a friend, you know, that there's a fine line of it. And me, I'm the type of friend that, you know, I'm gonna play my role. You know, I'm gonna give you the game, I'm gonna give you the advice, I'm gonna tell you, you know, what you coulda, shoulda, woulda. But when I come around your man, I'm gonna act deaf and blind. Like, I'm gonna be like Stevie Wonder. I'm gonna be like, huh, hey, boo, hey, friend. You know what I'm saying? Everything is cool because that's overstepping your boundaries. When I come around him acting like me and him got a personal problem, and he doesn't even know because he's not supposed to know. He's not in those girl chats. He's not in our personal text messages. He's not seeing what we're talking about. So he has no idea that I don't act it like him. But my job as your friend is to support you. And that makes a good friend. That's when you're not overstepping your boundaries. As long as I'm supporting you, you could be marrying Hussan Sedin. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Osama bin Laden. And I don't agree with how he lives his life and the things that he does, but you're marrying him. And my job as a friend is to support you. Overstepping your boundaries as a friend is me saying, girl, you know he blow up buildings. Girl, you know he blow up planes. Girl, you do you know he killed about a thousand people and he chopping off baby heads. How dare you walk down the aisle with him? What if he do this to your kid? No. And you're saying, so you're not coming to my wedding? I'm coming to your wedding. And I'm not going to ruin your beautiful day with, with bombarding you with all these things that of why he's a red flag. And this is who, you know the saying? I like it, you love it. Follow your own blueprint. Me and you talk all the time, right? And you always ask me for advice, right? And... You know, I, lo I love you. I love you for always coming to me and looking at me like, you know, like holiday. What should I do? You know, and I always tell you, like, this is what I would do. But if you choose not to agree with what I'm doing, that's OK. It, I'm not going to sit up here and, and argue you down and make you feel guilty for not choosing the path that I take. <clears throat> do you understand what I'm saying? So if you're asking me advice, I feel like, you know. You're a nail tech. I know you watch a lot of girls on 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 Instagram, and they're doing they they're getting they're doing celebrity nails, and you're doing celebrity nails too. But they're doing celebrity nails, and you're like, "Holiday, how do I get?" And I'm like, you know, that's that's the way they're getting there. You know, you might be the tortoise. What's the what's the what's the what's the um the the, the nursery rhyme with the tortoise and the hare, and it's like slow and steady. You know what I'm saying? Instead of fat, okay, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nursery rhyme for kids, and it's about the tortoise and the hare, and it's a race that they're on. And, and the turtle wins? Yes. I heard about it. Because it was slow and steady. So, I'm a rapper. I, I know a lot of girls who are in a space in the career where I would love to be, but it's not my time. 
And yes, I can sit up here and make like a million excuses and of, of, of what I could be doing or why I'm not on that path or I'm doing exactly what they're doing. And I'm watching and for a long time. I used to watch what these other girls were doing and saying, why am I not where they where they are? Because that is not my blueprint to get there. Right. Sitting here talking to you guys. Right. Because I love you guys so much. And make sure you go subscribe, like and comment because we just F with you like that. <laughs> um <laughs> But my point in this story is just saying, like, you know, I do music. And a lot of you who don't know that I do music, like, this is a crossroad for me. And, you know, I go places and people know me for being here, for being at Eight at the Table, for talking my shit, and for, 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 for giving game. And, and, I, and I love what I'm doing because this is my truth, you know. But this is the path for people to get to know who I am. And eventually, because you're going to go click that, that link in the bio and go download that new music and all those good stuff. But that is the way to get there. If that is my path and that is my blueprint, it's not going to happen where this girl got discovered on the pole. This is not going to happen where um, I want a freestyle battle for Hot 97. This is not going to be like, this is this. is this. You understand what I'm saying? So... I just tell everyone, follow your own path, follow your own blueprint. Even when it comes to relationships, I watch girls who say, you know, I want to ring on my finger before I, I do this and do that or whatever, because so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so had that. But that may not be your way to love. That may not be your way to, 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 to being rich. That may not be your way to, to be at the top of that company. Um, George works here. He's been working here for 10 years and finally he gets a raise and he becomes the CEO of the company. That may not be John Tommy's story. You understand? Tommy may work there for two weeks and the CEO may see something in him and say, I'm about to croak. I'm going to give the crown, the crown to you. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So follow your own path. That's just, that's just, that's just what I'm saying. Like Jay's Does everybody have an easy path to happiness? Everybody as an individual have a hard time to um, happiness. I have been in a judge. For example, when I talk about my problems, people don't take me serious because they feel like, oh, you have it good, this and this and that. You know, like, you don't... Bitch, I didn't even know you had a nanny. Anyways, so, oh, you have a good this and this and that. And then when I tell them I'm stressed, they look at me like, well, girl, I'm, I'm going through real problems. And that, that, that really frustrates me because... Um, I probably feel just as bad as you, as what you're going through and what I'm going through. And, and perhaps it's not the same hardship, but it's the same experience. And that is equivalent to the human experience she I'm just having. You told me she had a nanny growing up. First of all, I'm not rich. Um, I just came from um, my mom. You know, she's always been hip and young and in the you know, in the mix a little bit. So she had a couple dollars to just pay somebody to clean because my mom grew up with nannies in the yard. So she wasn't a big cleaning girl. So therefore, when she came to New York to live, she wasn't big on that, so she had the money to pay for it. And um, I didn't really start doing stuff till I moved out of my house with my boyfriend. But other than that, um, what I'm trying to say is, a lot of people think that we, first of all, a lot of people think because you have money, you don't have that much problems. And I feel like the more money, the more problems. You know what I'm trying to say? And a lot of times, that's for people who have the money. Now, for, as for me, if you think I have it easy because of the lifestyle or the, of my upbringings, um, I think when you judge somebody because of their status or whatever they're going through, everybody goes through their own hardship. It is just as, as equivalent as it is through with somebody that's rich and somebody that's poor. Because even though you're rich, you're probably missing out on the true value of what is life and what is lived as a human being on this earth. And that is even worse than surviving as a poor person on this earth you know what i'm trying to say because when you're poor you probably live through more life emotion and go through the hardships of life and actually experience life but everybody goes through it just the same whether you're poor or rich privileged or not i'd rather cry than me back <laughs> but you're still crying <laughs> but you're still crying and at the end of the and day I rather, and i'd rather have my own money so i can grind my own me back but, but you, you cannot can cover the sun with one finger no i can cover the sun with the sunroof Okay, and it's my Maybach, so I don't have to go back to his house and cry. I can cry in my own car that he can't take. That part. Okay, I ladies. The moral of the story is: get your own bag. Yeah, always have your get own your, life. Have your own money. Have your own bag. The only women 
that I know, Nisha, you know, we talk so much. The only women I know that say they want a man to take care of them and not work is women who never had it. Women who have never had a man financially be responsible for their every That's true. given. That's so everything. True. Take wow. care of everything, pay for everything, give them an allowance. And, and it's a, yes, it is a luxury. It is. It is. I'm glad we spoke but, about that. But at the end of the day, it, be, it gets old just like anything else. Thank you. And eventually, you know what you want to do? I know this sounds crazy. I know this kind of sounds, it's going to sound like buffoon. Cringing. You're going to want to go back to work. You're going to go want to go get your own money. You're going to want to go get a job eventually. You know why? I don't care. And when I say a job, the luxury of having a wealthy man is that what you're doing, you love. That's the only luxury is that you don't have to do the, the crunching, gringing work of whatever it is that you don't like to do. You can go create your own job, start your own business and do what you love. It's the only the lazy hoes. But eventually you have to, even as lazy as you are, eventually you have to get there. No, but some women don't. And what happens is, is when the man gets tired of you being a lazy hoe because he catches up on the game. Because men catch up on red flags too. They get late. They're just late. They're really late. <laughs> men are really late to red flags. They could be with a whole bit. Look at, that, look at Dr. Dre. He was with a whole woman for so many years. And now he's paying all this alimony and didn't even know that she was she was this woman. You I think a lot right? of times men create this type of woman. No, nah, we yes, we let me tell you something, girl. You know what we want. Let me tell you we something. We were some girl. bitches when we came. Don't fight. I'm Don't gonna fight. tell you something right now. When I start a relationship, I have nothing to offer, let's say, but who I am, my family, my friends, and whatever it is that go that's going on around me. I'm not going into no relationship with friends or men as a slime person, grimy, I have an agenda with you because at the end of the day, I don't feel like nobody can give me what I want. And true happiness, nobody can give you that but you. You understand what I'm trying to say? So I don't need to get that from some, nobody else. Therefore, when you stay, for example, Dr. J's situation, like you said, and she turned out to be this woman, I cannot name you the type of fetishes these men with money have that that at the cost of a lot of lives around them, not just the woman that they're with, but a lot of people that they're around. And with that being said, when you're a person, a lot of people are not strong enough to leave people that they know they have access to, that have power. It's hard to give up on that because you feel like you have access to that type of power. So when you finally give up on that, you have to come full force because you already know the type of person that person this is. This goes back to life changing and game changes. Are you staying with this man because you he stay, has all this power? A lot of girls do, but everybody leaves eventually. And that's what I mean. A lot of men create these type of women. I don't think that any woman is going in a relationship with a man with money trying to be a slime bitch. I think she feels like safe and secured. For a woman to react like that, it's a lot of bitterness built up. A lot of bitterness and a lot of hurt and a lot of back behind the story things that these men do that we do not speak about publicly. And a lot of us women, we hold it down more than unfortunately. We keep shit quiet, not just, I cannot tell you, I've been in a situation, first of all, I'm not even a convict or near, and I keep kept my mouth shut in police situation way more than guys. You know what I'm trying to say? A lot of girls, I feel like women are gonna end up ruling the world eventually, and I am pro that, because living in a men's world is boring. Men don't have nowadays nothing to offer besides money and dick, because they don't come with real values. Men values have decreased immensely. Oh, talk about it, sis. Men value have decreased immensely throughout decades. And I don't know if it has to do with society bringing you down, but literally you guys do not believe in honor and street code and no type of code. Your guys are just following whatever it is that gets you the next bitch. And if you're that type of the weakest man I have ever met in my oh. life. And I'm not trying to call men weak out here, but if you're a man that follows no man codes and you do not live with honor, then unfortunately your manhood is stripped away from you. And if you do not realize that now, you will realize that late, very late, when you have probably no family that's looking after you or no kids that you look after for because he was a deadbeat. So just 
please know that the honor of a man is so valuable in this world and we're losing it. Ashanti, I, I love you. That's why you're my friend. You know, we're both Sagittarius. Um, Sagittarius is, you know. <laughs> um, and I just want to say, like, a lot of men don't understand what makes a powerful woman, what makes us so empowered and, and so strong. And a lot of it comes from understanding who we are, what we bring to the table. And so I just I just want to end it off with men understanding that when it comes to a woman being the best she can be and the most powerful she can be, powerful she can be, family, friends, cultivating yourself around good people makes us so strong. Those open doors to opportunities. And, and I just want to just double back to life changers and game changers. Those are life changers. I know when I have good friends around me, when I have good family around me, when I'm having good conversations like we have in today, um, they empower certain things that and endorphins and things that go off in my body and my, my mind that make me creative, make me um, ambitious, make me driven. Um, so men, I just want you to understand like being family oriented is number one. Being honest, being transparent, being trustworthy. And I'm not neglecting my women. Ladies, you got to do the same thing if you want that kind of man. We always talk about that we want a boss. But literally, the girls are on their shit right now. And all some aspects. of them. Majority. Some of, them, some of y'all some slime cannot, ass hoes. Let me tell you, okay, there's some, some of y'all some slime ass hoes out here. And I and get that. And y'all penny pitching and living off of men. And listen, I used to be that girl. But most of those girls are stuck in their old ways back in the days. Yes. Now, what I'm trying to say is ladies are more in their game. Like, they're taking care of the household and they're being a woman. And when, when, I, when I say me and a woman, you're being a lot. Because do not know what it takes to be a woman in and the that house. And Instagram, hold on, sis. And that Instagram, we make it look so easy. I'm one. We make it look so easy. Females be taking care of a whole household, kid, laundry, cooking, cleaning, and then get fly, get the wigs, the stylists, and everything, and step outside and look good and post these pictures that you see on Instagram and this lifestyle that we live in, but you have no idea what goes into being a bad bitch. <laughs> okay? Like, at the end of the day, I just want men and ladies, I love y'all. I want y'all to step up your game. I want y'all to become these boss women that I know y'all could be. Like, it's nothing wrong with having a wealthy man because that's all I attract. But at the end of the day, you got to have your own. Always, girl. You have gotta your, have own your own life bag. before you go in a relationship and think that a man is going to change your life. Because like I said, have nothing to offer besides stick and money. All right? If you're looking for a man to respect you and um, be this feminist girl that you want to be. I don't need him to respect me all the time. You it's do need a man to. Yes. Human <laughs> respect is dignity. God. I love and you guys. And listen, you know I stay with the bad bitches. I, I stay with the fine females. Listen, my Thank friend you. Ashanti, she's in the building. I had to bring her through. I want you to stay tuned. Eat at the table. Check us every week. Share, like, subscribe. I love you guys. Listen, I read them comments. I miss y'all. I miss y'all just as much as y'all miss me. Stay tuned because, you know, every week if I'm sitting here, I'm going to have a bad bitch next to me. You this understand what I'm saying? Make sure you subscribe. Holiday, the golden child. Bye. You already know. Ate at the table. Bye, guys.